So right now, I'm about to thaw out some bait. In these bags, I have a couple of mahi-mahi and a couple ahi. Christina Comfort is a graduate student at the University of Hawaii, and she's getting ready to go fishing. So these fish, uh, we actually get for free from the Honolulu Fish Auction. Uh, the guys who work there think I'm pretty funny because I'm the only girl that ever comes by to pick up dead fish heads. You might notice that the bait she's prepping looks a little bit bigger than what you'd put at the end of just a regular fishing pole. The team at the UH Oceanography Department is actually studying deep water sharks. So this is our very sophisticated bait cutting tool. When I first started working with sharks, I didn't mind touching the dead fish, but I really didn't like cutting them up. Clearly I've had to get over that. Christina wants to get close to these sharks for good reason. The phrase bycatch refers to animals that are unintentionally caught by a commercial fishery. As fish populations decrease in overfished areas, commercial fisheries are resorting to fishing in deeper and deeper waters. And unfortunately, what they pull up in their nets and on their hooks sometimes includes deep water sharks. The team's work is important because commercial fisheries are often regulated not by the type of fish they're aiming to catch, but by species that are accidentally caught, the bycatch. It is 5.30 in the morning and we are going out into the ocean to retrieve our deep set demersal longline. Dr. Kevin Wang is the project manager at the Pelagic Fisheries Research Center at UH. And although it's fair to say he and his team are shark experts, you might be surprised to find out that very little is known about deep water sharks. They're incredibly hard to study. From cutting up and setting the bait at the drop point to pulling up over 1,600 feet of line the next day, it's a back-breaking two-day process for each trip. It feels kind of heavy, so that might be the weight, or hopefully we have something on it. Some of the challenges that we have are actually just catching the animal. So we've actually gotten advice from commercial fishermen in order to understand how to do this because if you want to know how to catch a fish, you call a commercial guy. We try to make sure that whenever we're working, things are safe and under control. We will use a, a hook to grab the animal to get it you know, into range and we'll put a tail rope around its tail to control it. That way we can have the animal kind of stretched out from its mouth to its tail and thereby it's not able to really struggle and flap around. It's very, very important to have an organized team where everybody knows what they're doing and what their role is. The deeper an animal's habitat, the harder they are to study. These sharks, for example, are estimated to live more than half a mile below the surface. But the best way to know for sure about where they like to hang out is by tagging them. The more detailed data the team collects, the less likely these deep water sharks will be caught by commercial fisheries in the future. Obviously, the sharks don't enjoy being captured, but we do the procedures as quickly as we possibly can. and. We always take length and other measurements from the animal. We generally put a satellite tag in. One, two, three. Go. Oh, nice. We also surgically implant an acoustic tag into the animal. We also take a very small muscle sample with a biopsy probe, and we take a little tiny clip of skin off of the fin in order to get a DNA sample. So in a very short period of time, we're getting a whole variety of different samples from the animal before we release it back into the wild. We caught two Echinorhinus cookii sharks. It's called a prickly shark, and uh, so I've got like a couple of uh, couple of like prickly shark little things. <laughs> the 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 skin is like uh, it's like lots and lots of tiny little needles. So that's why it's called a prickly shark. It's also called a cook shark. It's a species that's commonly caught in deep water commercial fisheries, so it's another one that we're interested in for management purposes as, as a bycatch species. From what little is known about deepwater sharks, it's thought that they reproduce very slowly, and this means that they're especially vulnerable to overfishing. Dr. Wang and his team are working hard to reduce that outcome. I'm just finding our waypoint here. This is a lot of work, but it's really, really rewarding work. We have a lot of work in the lab, a lot of work on the computer beforehand and of course afterwards analyzing the data, writing things up. But we're learning new things about species that are not well understood. This is new information to biology. It's information that's gonna be really helpful for management and conservation purposes. So it's absolutely worth it every minute.